Hey there, friends. How's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I have a, a process video today where I'm going to talk to you about the process of learning songs and give you some tips. I'll show you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to learn any difficult finger-style song on guitar. Um, I'm going to use a 17-measure arrangement throughout this lesson. I'm going to show you how I went about learning it step-by-step. -step. Check this out. I'm going to start with just the chords. This is what I did. I learned just the chord shapes first. Got my left hand familiar with those. Then I looked at just the melody notes, the notes my right index finger would be playing. And I got familiar with those. I wasn't worried about timing or rhythm yet. I was just sort of learning the lay of the land, right? Developing the sort of vocabulary of notes I would need. Then I started to bring in the right thumb, doing the bass note stuff, but I did it slowly. One beat per measure at first, then two beats per measure. Then I wanted to spend some time with that right thumb, and I went through the alternating bass notes on each chord, got familiar with that. Then I sort of combined the two, but I did it in a way where it was simple at first, a simple rhythm and simple alternating bass notes. But then I brought in the more complicated alternating bass notes before finally bringing in the final and most complicated of the right hand rhythms with my index finger. Okay, now step by step was vital for me doing this, right? Because this is a song that's eluded me forever, right? And uh, this process worked over a couple weeks, a little bit every day or every couple days. I was able to finally get it to the point where I can do it mostly without thinking now. Now this song in particular that I'm looking at here, this arrangement's inspired by John Prine's song, In Spite of Ourselves. It's a song a lot of you have requested. I want to do a full lesson on it in a separate video. Um, this will sort of sound just like it, so it'll be a little bit of a helpful thing if you're interested in John Prine or learning this song. But the most important part of this video is to implore upon you the idea that no matter what song you're ever learning, when it comes to Travis picking, you can use the steps I'm teaching you here to learn that song, right? Start with the chords, add the melody notes by themselves, played freely, don't worry about rhythm yet. Then start to combine the two slowly and up the complexity little by little as you get more and more confident. So I'm gonna take you through it step by step. And again, you can get the PDF on over at my website for this. It's lesson 375. Um, it's about nine pages long, super helpful. And again, you can use this for whatever song you're learning, especially in the finger style world and extra especially in the Travis picking world. So thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon through your monthly or annual subscriptions. I hope that the library of PDFs I have available is, is helpful to you all and um, you know, I'm really uh, glad to keep be making these lessons for you. So uh, let's get into this one. I'll see you all on the other side and uh, let's do it. All right, y'all. So the first step I'm going to walk you through um, when you're learning any difficult song, right, is starting with the chord shapes. Number one, identifying what the chords you need are, which can be a skill in itself. But even if you're given the full sheet music, the full tab, the full arrangement, look at the chords, try to figure out what the chords are you're going to need. And then basically make sure your left hand is comfortable playing those chords, okay? And uh, it's sometimes it's not as simple as, you know, I need a C, F, G. That's all I need, right? Sometimes it's more complicated. You want to figure out what exact voicing or what exact variations of the chord are you going to need. Now, with a finger style tab, like the one I have on page one of my PDF here, if you only had page one, you know it's only going to use C and F and G. But you could look closely and see, okay, with this C, it's going to be based on the open position, right? And I can see that we're going to need this third fret note on the thinnest strings sometimes, but it's gonna go away other times, right? And likewise, the bass note, it's gonna be on the fifth string sometimes, but the G string other times, or the low E string, sorry, right? Um, and then even on this second string, the B string, sometimes we're gonna have this third fret note, other times we're gonna have a first fret note. So what we can do there is um, sort of surmise and figure out that if you look at this chart of how to play a C, you know, we have our regular finger positions on the, on the far left here, but we also have these variations that I've written up on the far right. Now I'm showing you these here so you could learn these for this particular arrangement, but the main idea is if you didn't have me explaining this to you is look at the tab, use the notes in the tab to sort of discern what are the additional notes I need to add to this chord or remove from the chord, right? Uh, maybe your bass note's gonna change, which is happening here. So on the right side here, I have pink, uh, versions of C. Sometimes you're gonna add your pinky up here. Other times you're gonna add your pinky on the second string, right? Other times you're gonna move your ring finger to the low E string, okay? So I'm gonna talk about when you use each of these during how you play it later. But the point is, know you're gonna need a C chord. Sometimes you're gonna switch your low uh, ring finger. Sometimes you're gonna add your pinky here. Other times you're gonna add your pinky there, okay? And the same for the F. Now this is a trickier F in this particular arrangement, but you're gonna see we're always gonna need uh, the, low, the low E string 
I'm going to sort of do a wrapped version of my F. I have a whole separate lesson on this technique. It's ideal for this sort of finger style. But you want your wrapped thumb on that first fret of the low E string, and then you just want these three fingers on the fourth, third, and second string. But if you look at the tab, you're going to notice sometimes uh, you're taking your finger off of the second, third string, that is. Okay. Other times you're going to be adding your pinky to this third fret note on the second string. Same note we're adding on the C chord, actually, right? So. Okay, so we have our F. We're going to sometimes take off this note. We're going to add this note sometimes. Okay, so get comfortable with these. Practice these along with the C. So again, the whole idea here is you learn the chord shapes, and anything you're going to learn finger style that follows is going to be based on those shapes. Finally, for the G, ring finger down here, pinky up here. Sometimes you're going to take the pinky off, right? Other times you're going to add the pinky on the second string, third fret. Same note we're adding on the F and in the C. Okay, so again, you have my page two to show you these, but you could, if you're um, with a careful enough eye, you could look at this finger style tab and discern, okay, it's gonna be a G, but sometimes this high E string's open, other times this second string has a third fret added. Okay, so now we know the chords. You need a CFG, and I've showed you the particular voicings. Now let's move on to the next step, which is gonna be learning the chord progressions. So this one's a bit more straightforward because, again, I have it written out for you here. But the idea here is to sort of understand uh, how many measures we're going to be playing, right? How long are we staying on each measure? It's going to be, in this case, it's four counts per measure, but the song, you know, different songs have different time signatures. Um, and also, like, what's, how long are we staying on the given chord? So basically, you could take the, the, the first line of this, right? We're going from C, two, three, four, to C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, two, three, four. Now, I could keep playing it, but the point here is you could take this first page tab, and um, not only will you see the chords written out, which will help you understand how long to stay on each chord, but you also get a sense of which of the voicings you're going to need in which order. For example, with the C, you're going to have your pinky down on this third fret of the high E string for the first measure, and then take it off for the second measure, right? And put it back for the third measure, and then take it off for the the fourth measure. Now if you look at my tab here, you're going to see that that matches up with the very complex finger style arrangement, which is the end product. Okay? And you could hum or sing over this, which actually is a very helpful way. If you know the song you're trying to learn, and you have the sheet music, just start by playing the simple chords and maybe hum or sing, you know. Okay? That's a very helpful way to do it because what you're starting to do is, number one, teach your left hand what are the chords you need in order, right? And you're also sort of training your brain to sort of think about that melody that's going to be played over top of the chords, right? And if you can ideally start to be aware of the different voicings of the chords that are going to be used in, in, in order um, and how how they sort of combine with the melody, you're gonna be in good shape, even though you're not playing the melody yet, okay? So that's step two, which is learning the chord progression. So next, the next step I have is adding melody notes. And with Travis picking, you know, again, we have our bass notes going on with our thumb, and we're combining that with, and if you combine those together, We're not going to combine them yet, but what we're going to do is just learn the melody notes with our right hand. And this is an important part. At first, don't worry about timing or rhythm just yet. You just want to understand, like, what are the notes we need in each chord or in each sequence of the song. And you're going to learn it's really not that many in general, because usually you're working within a scale, and usually songs are only working within a certain part of the scale. So here we have, you know... Going from the third fret to the open high E string, third fret, second string, first fret, second string. Okay? So really just those four notes, right? So that's not that many notes. You can sort of wrap your head around that, right? Now what if we played these slowly, freely, meaning take your time, and you sort of added the right thumb at the one count of each measure, which is an ideal thing to do if you can. That would sound like this. Right? The 
third measure. Okay, and we go to the F. And then back to the C. Okay, now the G. slow and the point here is you're getting familiar with the sort of foundational melody notes you're gonna need you're not worrying about rhythm just yet rhythm is tricky we can add that later first this is like the it's kind of like vocabulary right the chords you need the chords then you need the melody notes the rhythm you can add once you're comfortable with the chords and the melody notes okay it's like if you're learning a new language or speaking it you got to learn general you know sentence structure uh, I guess if you're I'm, I'm thinking about Spanish I took Spanish in middle school and high school right and um, then you need to learn vocabulary and if you're I've never been to, to a Spanish speaking country but if you were if you were talking there you know a, a, a local speaker is not going to get upset if you're speaking slow or um, that sort of thing you know it's really can you get the main points across and that's what we're talking about here is get the chords in the right order and then add the basic melody notes don't worry about rhythm yet okay so spend time with this if you're learning this song spend time at this step and um, let's move on to the next step so after we have the melody notes with the basic you know the, the the single finger on the one count on your right hand your right thumb then what we can do is do the same thing but bring in the right thumb a little bit more so here what we're gonna do is on the one count and on the three count we're gonna add the right thumb Okay, this is going to use the same melody exercise we've been doing, but it's going to ask a little bit more of us by bringing in the right thumb. Okay, so once we're ready for it. So that would sound like this. Now I'm not alternating the bass note, you might notice, yet. Yeah. Okay, and the F. Play it freely if you want, or slowly, but you do want to get, bring in the thumb on those one, two, three, four counts. Okay? So let's look at the next one, right? After we have that one sort of worked out, which is going to be reminding ourselves uh, and diving into just the right thumb. Okay? Whereas before, we were sort of just doing the melody notes. Now we're doing just the right thumb, and the idea here is we have to bring in the alternating bass notes, which are a super tricky part about Travis picking. So that would basically be, and these are kind of simplified too. On the C, I'm not doing the, I'm not going from fifth to fourth to sixth to fourth, from fifth to fourth to sixth to fourth. I'm going to add that at the very end. Right now, it's just keeping it simple, right? So I'm not doing the, the C complexity, and I'm not doing some of the walk-up stuff very end. I'm not doing that for example. We'll add that later too. So that looks like this. The beginning. Just C, C, right? Doing it for four measures. And here you can start to actually hum it if you can, right? To F, which is the sixth to fourth string. Back to C for two more measures. Then to G for two measures and three measures actually and then C okay so if you were learning this song for the first time you'd want to you have already learned the chord progression you've already learned the chord shapes you're familiar with the melody now all you're doing is practicing the right thumb no, don't do that alternating don't do that six string thing yet you're just doing the alternating bass note and this might seem silly and boring but it's really important you get some practice reps in because it's only going to get harder when you start to move in and uh, mix in the right index finger okay but the next step step number six is to bring in the the melody okay but what we're going to do here is use a simple melody a simple rhythm that is that is that is always pinched with the bass notes, right? So what, I, what I'm talking about is this. And that is as opposed to the final version, which sounds like this. Notice the rhythm difference. The 
final version is going to use a lot more syncopation. We're going to have lots of beats played on the off count, on the eighth notes, right? Whereas this one is very on the nose. Whoops. Okay, and you can continue for the whole thing. Let me finish it up here. Here's the F. When you're doing it this way, sometimes I find this actually harder to do than the actual proper rhythm. Something about when the rhythm is a bit more tricky, my mind has an easier time separating my fingers, my right hand, my index fingers from my thumb. When I'm doing them all together like this, Kind of messes with my brain in a weird way um, but I'll leave it to you again this is I'm showing you the sort of total simple step-by-step -step way to do it and hopefully uh, this works for you if it doesn't work you can sort of skip to this next step which is going to be add the remaining complexity to the bass notes so we're still going to keep the, the timing simple with the pinches right but what we're going to do is bring in on the C especially instead of doing fifth to fourth which is all we've been doing so far with the bass notes we're going to do Fifth to fourth, sixth to fourth, fifth to fourth, sixth to fourth. This is very tricky to do, and I, I put this off for a long time because I was having trouble with it, right? Because um, basically, you're already having complexity with the melody, and you're adding complexity with the bass note. So uh, that's what I have tabbed out here, though. So that's going to sound like this. measure we're doing a walk up okay and then the third to last measure on the G we're doing that we're adding this fifth string note which is different than the normal G pattern but again it's appropriate it's per um, the sort of ending of this in sequence where we want it to sound a little bit different so work on that okay and then once you have that you have the final step and all we're doing here that's different is with the melody notes, we're going to the final version of the actual arrangement where some of them are played not with the pinch. Some of them are played on the off beats. And in my notation here, I have like the dash, which means a, a melody note is being played on the and count between the one and the two, or the two and the three and the three and the four, right? The one, two, three, four are all quarter notes, and the ands are all eighth notes. And on that's where some of the melody notes, but not all, are gonna happen. So here's what the final one sounds like. And there you have it. So what I've showed you, again, is a step-by-step -step way to do this. And this roughly maps out to how I learned this, this 17 measure sequence over the last couple of weeks. I've always wanted to learn this arrangement, um, but it's been hard for me. I've always gotten stumped on the first couple measures. So what I did was I sort of said, okay, how can I learn this step-by-step? -step? Let me first learn the chords. I learned the chords. Then let me learn the alternating bass note, right? I did that. Then let me learn the melody by itself. Kind of monotonous, but if you do a little bit of practice every so often, you know, every day or a couple times a day, it's going to add up. And then I could sort of go through this step by step. And finally, I'm at the point where I can play it from beginning to end. So again, um, this this whole lesson, this PDF will help you. You know, if you're trying to learn John Prine's song, In Spite of Ourselves, this is 
pretty much largely based on that arrangement. I made a, a few different changes. It's how I like to play it. Um, so this will help you with that. But also any difficult finger style song you're learning especially, Travis picking especially, where you have to have an independent thumb working in combination. This will help you. Take it step by step. Learn the chords. Learn the melody notes by themselves. Bring them together slowly, step by step, step by step. Take it slow. This will help you. So that's really my aim with this lesson is to sort of outline this progress, th this step for you because um, I can only make so many lessons as a guitar teacher um, and the songs you're going to want to learn are invariably going to be different from what I teach from time to time. But I hope this map I've showed you of, of uh, the order to move through things will be helpful. So thanks very much for watching, y'all, and uh, good luck with this. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or um, song requests or this or that or the other, and I'll be happy to, to read them and hopefully get back to you. So thanks to all of you who are supporting me. I uh, really appreciate the, the, the monthly or annual support you're getting. I hope you're digging the PDFs and all that sort of thing and plenty more lessons to come. I'll see you all in the next one, my friends. Bye-bye.